Great. First, first of all, let me introduce, uh, you've heard a little bit from me. Uh, my name is Lawrence Hambling. I'm the co-chair of the SPP Packaging Chapter. Uh, in, my, in my spare time, my day job, I'm a strategy director at Accenture. Um, I'm a former sustainable sourcing director at, uh, at Heineken. And I love packaging. Uh, I want to be involved in this, uh, in this chapter. Uh, it's so important uh, for us, right? It's powerful. It educates our consumers. It protects our products. It differentiates uh, products from the shelves. Um, but it also pollutes, right? So um, I want to make sure that, uh, that uh, I help uh, my fellow procurement professionals um, understand the role of packaging, the need for strategy and what a pivotal role uh, procurement can, uh, can play. And uh, I'm not doing this alone. I'm doing this together with uh, with my colleague, uh, Neil Shackleton. Neil, are you there? Please introduce yourself. I am. Um, good afternoon, everybody. So, yeah, I'm Neil Shackleton. Um, I'm obviously the, the other co-founder of the, the packaging chapter. Um, I'm founder of Medulla. We are a sustainable packaging and supply chain consultancy. Um, I have a full career which stems packaging and supply chain. I think what you will get from myself and Lawrence and from um, the other members of our team, which we'll be introduced shortly, is that we have a genuine passion to try and drive um, real thinking into, into your packaging decisions. I mean, if, if you look at first glance, you, you may think that Packaging sustainability and procurement um, may be a slight disconnect. You, you may find it a poison chalice, but we're here to help you. We're here to guide you through that. Um, and we, we really believe that we can give you um, the, the right kind of uh, tips and st strategy to take your businesses and your, and your jobs forward um, with real direction, not just direction on paper, but with real tangible results. Thanks, Neil. And the first thing that we've done as a, as, a, as a packaging chapter is that we've got a core team together. So, and um, I can see they're, they're both uh, they're both here as well. So, uh, Yoselina, please uh, please introduce yourself. Thank you, Lawrence. Good morning. Good afternoon. Delighted to be here. So, echoing the colleagues, uh, the comments from my colleagues from the core team in the chapter. Um, I'm Joselina Peralta. Um, I'm actually based in the U.S. and I'm a purchasing director at Henkel. Prior to joining. Henkel, I was actually uh, responsible for supply chain and procurement end-to-end -end at Troy Corporation and spent uh, over 23 years of career primarily in purchasing in supply chain and procurement. The reason why packaging in today's discussion is so important is um, sometimes it gets overlooked, uh, specifically when we think about um, brand, but also design, product, and specifically about the impact that it has in the carbon footprint. So I think from a purchasing procurement supply chain perspective, it's one of the areas that is always think last, meaning packaging, but is an area that is a huge importance because if you think about it over the last three years, specifically with the pandemic, has been a lot of product being shipped around the world, about 5 billion per year or so. All of that packaging turns into waste, right? So when we think about landfill impact, when we think about um, how can we recycle more and how do we partner with our suppliers, starts from the point of design, but also on how we can become more circular. So I think that through this discussion today is gonna be very critical to how do we partner with our suppliers, so externally, so then we can actually do more with less, but also at the same time, how do we then uh, try to reduce the, the waste in, in creative ways so then we can help our planet. We only get one planet, so the time to act is now. So thanks guys and, and looking forward to this conversation. Well said, uh, Joselina. And, and finally in the core team, Alan, welcome. Please introduce yourself. You're on mute, Alan. Alan, you're on mute. Yeah, we still can't hear you, Alan. We can always come back to you, Alan, and have you introduce yourself later. Okay, something wrong with Alan's sounds. Uh, we'll come back to uh, we'll come back to him during the panel discussion. Yeah. 
And next we have some guests. So really, uh, really happy that uh, that um, uh, that we have some uh, so, some people outside of the uh, outside of the chapter to come and talk to us. Unfortunately, Adam has come down with illness this morning and is not with us. So that's a bit of a shame. So uh, no pressure on you, uh, Jane. I think I saw you making a comment in the uh, in the uh, in in the chat. So Jane, welcome. Please introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. I actually also <laughs> wasn't sure if I had to cancel. I've got some norovirus. So if you see me running <laughs> out of the <laughs> screen, you know what's going on. So um, <clears throat> excuse me. So yeah, my name is Jane Munker. I am based in Zurich in Switzerland. And uh, 10 years ago, I set up the Food Packaging Forum, where a charity, charitable foundation dedicated to chemicals in food packaging. And quite recently, we made a strategic decision to actually also look more holistically at the other impacts that packaging, food packaging can have uh, also on the environment. So we're very focused on human health, but also looking at, at the sort of big picture impacts of food packaging. My background is I'm an environmental scientist. So I love complexity and I feel very happy in this conversation. I think it's going to be very complex. <laughs> thanks for having me. Thanks, Jane. Thanks very, uh, thanks very much. Good. Okay. Now you've heard from us. Now we want to hear from you. So grab your telephones. First question is coming. Very simple. We want to know where you're coming, where you're joining us from. Be really interested to see how many. I see we've got over 100 and oh, we've got nearly 180 people. So that's uh, you'll see that's going to um, that's going to form a nice little word word cloud there to see if uh, I'll give you a few more seconds to just type in that. Oh, we've got quite. Uh, Quite a good, uh, quite a good mix. Europe, USA. I'm also based in the Netherlands. I think, uh, I think all, all, I think all of the panel are here in different countries. I think Neil's sitting in Spain. I'm in the Netherlands. Josephine is in the US. Alan's in the, in the UK. Great. So that's a nice uh, thanks. So that's a nice little, uh, nice little overview of where, uh, of where we are. Next. We want to know what region your business is operating in. <clears throat> okay, so this also gives us a good idea because obviously packaging sustainability has different challenges in different areas uh, uh, around the world. So I see mainly uh, mainly global businesses joining. That's uh, that's interesting. No, no one from Africa, Middle East. Okay, it's interesting. Give everyone a few uh, a couple more seconds to answer that so so good so that's a panel we're dealing with uh, lots of uh, the audience is mainly dealing in global uh, global businesses so that's uh, that's good uh so tell us what about the industry that you're in what sort of mix have we got there lots of food and beverage and consumer goods seems to be all oh, chemical pharma seems to be the most popular at the moment and some other, we obviously missed out a couple of industries, uh, uh, industries there, oh, lots of other ones. Neil, Neil and I debated, did, did we miss any? Apparently we did. <laughs> good, but so we've got a good, uh, a good, uh, a good uh, cross section there across, uh, across industries. That's great. Shows you how important packaging, uh, packaging is. Then the final question for you guys before we get to our first panel question is sustainable packaging. Tell us what does it mean to you? What comes into you, what comes into your mind when you hear sustainable and packaging in the same sentence? Ownership, circular, no plastic, healthy. Saving the planet, recycle, reuse, life cycle. Oh, I saw someone say mushrooms there. <laughs> Zero waste. You see, look at that. That's amazing. This is one of the really one of the reasons why I exactly wanted to, we wanted to ask this question in this way. Look at the different look at the different responses it comes um with, from people and how 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 differently we think about it right i think that's extremely interesting and that's why it's such an interesting topic that's why it's complex 
So, panel, tell me, you've seen what the audience think. What does sustainable packaging uh, mean to you? I'm going I'm to bring uh, I'm going to bring you into the uh, equation first, uh, Joselina. What does it mean? Uh, what does it mean to you, for you personally, for your industry, for your for your job? You saw what the what the audience think. What do you think? Well, definitely circular is is what comes to my mind first. Um, how can we really? It's a must, right? So it can no longer be overlooked. Um, when we think about the waste footprint and the pollution that we have, um, we cannot look anymore and the cost actually when you look at the, what has been happening with even recycled packaging so i think definitely for me what i'm looking forward to is how can we actually um, repurpose more how can we then uh, it's not even about recycling it's probably more repurposing more um, and therefore circular is, is <coughs> what it sticks more in my mind yep. personally Alan, is your uh, is your mic working uh, yet? Let's see. Yeah. Yes, it is. Hey, how about that? Every so often. Anything you want to build. So I, I fully agree with you, Joseline. It's it's uh, you know you tend to think of circular uh, managing waste is something that comes to my mind uh, uh, a lot. You know, making sure that you're managing the impact you have on the environment. Of course, Alan, what what do you think? Yeah. Um. The, the thought that struck me uh, above all else, uh, Neil, it goes back to your opening remarks. You talked about all the positive features and benefits of packaging, yet it pollutes. And that simple starting point, we're using material which uh, can be associated with a lot of adverse impacts and therefore let's do better. That's the starting point. It's not about an optimization at the end of the supply chain and get it to look prettier and try and get a recycling label that consumers might believe. Let's actually go back to first principles and design packaging better from the outset so that it delivers on its purpose and its functionality. It protects and, and, uh, and ser product serves the needs of our businesses and consumers. And most of all, it actually starts to reduce its impact because it is one of those double-edged things that does a great job for us in modern society yet it pollutes and it degrades um, and it has a lot of adverse impacts. So taking those two things together is perhaps the most important aspect of sustainable packaging from my perspective. Absolutely. No, I, I tend to agree with you. And I want to immediately bring in Jane here because I know that when, when Jane and I were having this discussion uh, sort of in the preparation for this, that, that you had some, uh, some, some interesting uh, in thoughts on, on this as well. So Jane, tell, tell us a little about what, we, what um, your thoughts on this. I, I mean, I, I'm, I fully agree with what Alan said. Um, I do think that the key is smart design. Um, but I would actually go a little bit further. And I said this to you, I said I was going to be a bit provocative today. I don't think that something like sustainable packaging actually exists. Um, I'll just throw that out there. I think we have sustainable products that are packaged. Um, and I think that also goes a bit to what Joselina was saying, that Packaging needs to be part of the design stage of the product. It, you can't, you know, don't come to me with a, a fair trade, organic, super, whatever product and then ask me, how should I package it? Your packaging needs to be part of your business or your product development, right? It, it's, that's kind of, that's the wrong thinking to say, okay, we've got this product. Uh, how do we package it? No, packaging is part of your business model. It's part of your product development. So that, that's the first point that I really want to make here today. And of course, then we come to complexity. As I said before, I love complexity. Um, and I think you have to feel comfortable with complexity when you talk about packaging. Why? Because packaging fulfills so many different functions. It's not just about in my case, I, I think of food packaging. So uh, it's not just about preserving, conserving food, enabling a longer shelf life. It's about globalized business models, high throughput filling lines, right? Packaging has to work in those. It's about all the labels that have to go on the packaging, consumer information. It's about the marketing. Marketing people love packaging. It's about, it's about logistics. And it's about, you know, shipping stuff from one side of the world to the other and so on and so forth. And so there are so many requirements that packaging has to fulfill. And now the issue of waste is coming up, right? We see, oh, this, you know, 
designing for waste isn't working. So we have to somehow factor that in now as well. So that's the challenge. Last point, Lawrence, while I have the mic. Please go. One more thing I want to hammer in. If it isn't healthy, it's not sustainable. We need to talk much more about chemicals. We're not focusing at, on chemicals at all right now. And so that is a central part of the design phase. When we talk about functionality of packaging, what materials will work, we have to look at the chemicals that those materials are made up of. I think that's, that's it's great points. And that's exactly why I wanted you on the panel, because I think sometimes uh, we can all have uh, very similar uh, thoughts and discussions and uh, even strategies are, are around this so it's it's uh, for me it's really refreshing to get to get another angle on it and you're at, you're absolutely right you know that all it changed it changed a little bit my, my way of thinking on 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 how to do these things as well and it, and for me personally it's a real it's a, it's a topic that as a consumer it is everywhere right it's you cannot get away from it so you know how you know what what's good and what's bad etc those, those sorts of things are the challenges that we all face not only in in business but also in uh, as consumers as well so uh, really really interesting thoughts i'm sure we're going to come back uh, come back to those uh, um as well uh, neil do you want to add anything um yeah thanks Lawrence. um the only thing i want to add to that is is rather than asking the question, what does it mean? I'll tell you what sustainable packaging isn't. And it isn't one material. There is no silver bullet here, which is gonna reach out across our 190 participants today and say, this is your answer. Yeah. Um, we need to be much more um, on board with the fact that each of us in our own jobs, in our own businesses, in, in our own kind of um, brands and what we produce, we all run completely different scenarios. So what may be the best solution for one may not be for your competitor, maybe for other people on this call today. So we really need to get into that mindset. You know, we, we've already got down to a level where we, we tend to compare material to material and, and, and have this kind of constant debate about what's better. And it's about specific instances every single time and I want to make sure that everybody's very clear on that because it's something that that we can move into further further within this <coughs> yeah that's that's a great point absolutely great point so um and I think this ties up really nicely into um uh, into our next uh, audience question because we've 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 I think we've all highlighted it's complex um and it's a challenge right um and there's no one one solution plenty of things to, to to think about so i want to understand a little bit more from the from the participants okay so again use your use your phone I've, these, these are pre-filled uh pre-filled you can just rank them into what's your biggest challenge in terms of uh, packaging and sustainability because this is a, this is to understand this is also a little bit to understand how how we can uh, how we can come to to the challenge and, and the need for strategy and uh, the role of, the role of procurement. I'm I'm expect I'm expecting a, well, one single outcome and I, oh okay it's switching a little bit it's switching this is interesting. I will give people that as you do have to rank six things I will give people a, a bit more. A bit more time, but the what the one that is number one that is uh, is the one that I was expecting. <laughs> Great, I still think it's moving around. That's really interesting. I think data is an absolute. It's one of the is 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 obviously, and I'm glad you confirmed it. Is one of the biggest challenges that we are all all facing. Um, you know, some, I asked the question on purpose, but, you know, I was expecting this outcome, but it is good to have it, uh, it it's good to have it sort of uh, hit home and no strategy, right? So that's good that, that that's good that we're going to come on to that a little bit uh, uh, in a minute, because that's also really interesting that that's so, that's so high um, uh, and resources and investment, of course, uh, that's, uh, that's obviously a, a huge challenge with what's going on. Uh, particularly <laughs> what we've been experiencing over the last two years uh, and of course what is going on uh, 
uh, in, in, in Europe and, and, and Ukraine at the moment, uh, our, our attention quickly gets diverted, right? Uh, and for, for, for good reason. Good, okay, great, thanks. Um, okay, so now, I want to, so now I want to go into a little bit of um, um, what the role of procurement is in the organization in terms of sustainability and, and packaging. So as you vote, you'll see the dots will go towards are you a, a leader, a follower, a collaborator? No role whatsoever. I hope, I hope not. Oh, oh, there are. Okay, that's interesting. So there's, um, you all know at least, that's great. Oh no, there's a couple of don't knows coming in. <laughs> I think this is, uh, this is really, um, this is really interesting because I think obviously we all, most of us, I would imagine, are, are procurement uh, professionals, right? So, um, <coughs> yeah, so I think uh, this, this is really interesting. So it's quite, quite a big percentage of leader, but mostly co collaborator. And I think for, for me, um, for me personally, I, I think that is, some, that is absolutely what the role of procurement should be, should be playing is the role of, uh, the role of collaborator. Um, and because they have, you know, such a, such an influence internally within the organisation and also externally towards uh, towards suppliers, and it's great to see that uh, that some procurement departments are actually taking a leadership role in this because that's uh, that's uh, that's really important. Where the fucking hell? So um, good. Well, so panel, the role of. Um, the role of procurement and why it's uh, why it's important. Um, Neil, I'm going to come to you first. Thanks. I mean, I think, as I said before, the, the thing about being in procurement is is your your cat your targets away from say, let's take the sustainability piece to one side. So you know you you've got cost cost of goods to deal with. You've got. Um, ever increasing material prices um, you're trying to broker those deals for your organization that, that give you leverage that give you continuity and then all of a sudden sustainability comes along and the perceptive belief around sustainability is okay if we change something and we need to be more sustainable it's going to cost us more money and that might be we might need to invest in more capex it might be that we need to move different suppliers it might be we need to move to different materials all of these things bubbling out you know if, if, if i'm sat with my procurement hat on i'm thinking this is a complete disconnect to everything that i'm currently targeted on however when you actually start to kind of sit back and think about it you can see that the choices that you can make and and this is perhaps why there was quite a high incidence of of leadership in in the last slide is the fact that you're actually being much more than an influencer in the decision you can actually drive the strategy for the business on where that might go and i think that becomes vitally important so whereas maybe in, in many organizations r and d generally take the lead on developing new products you know as jane said we, we need to get much more kind of collaboration into these into these these processes so now we're moving to this kind of core partnership i think in, in some organizations where we're getting procurement to deal much more closely with r d much more understanding of the product much more understanding of the packaging and also get away from um the idea that this kind of procurement strategy can be driven purely on a spreadsheet it's about really getting underneath that now and starting to understand materials and supply chains and how the connections form both in in products in packaging and across the whole supply chain and even to the point of really starting to engage with consumers themselves which may be something that was completely foreign to some people in procurement before, but, but developing this total understanding, because having this you know, in, in the nucleus of your thinking is, is gonna drive you, your organizations and your business forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And I want, I want to, I fully agree, I want, to, I want to go a bit deeper on that. So it's definitely a mindset change, right? In terms of, uh, in terms of the role that procurement now has to play. I mean, the procurement as a, uh, is a different uh, is is beyond uh, beyond cost savings uh, etc. That, that you need to be you need to be involved in so many more things. Uh, you mentioned R and D there, and I think Jane, when we were talking, you also mentioned uh, uh, a, a few things. I mean, so, you know, from let's say from an outside organisation, 
looking at procurement, what, what are your what are your thoughts on on the role of procurement and why why it's important and how it can yeah, well, I think Neil said it perfectly. I mean, this well, total understanding that's that's the holy grail, right? We'll probably never get there, but we should aspire to it, um, especially if we have so many data gaps. Um, but I, I do agree with 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 what you said. Um, I think you know procurement, in a way, is the interpreter. That I mean, they have to um, they have to barter the deals. That they, they're about cost savings, of course. But then you can also ask. Is it immediate short-term cost savings or is it cost savings that, that have an impact on the strategy? And I think that's what you were driving at, you know, um, that maybe a sustainability, which used to, for many, many years, be kind of the matter of, of the communications people now actually becomes a little bit more um, tangible. Uh, put your money where the mouth is, you know, and, and packaging is that's like the business card of a product it's the first thing that people interact with and so it should be aligned with what the what the business is saying in terms of their sustainability goals um and i think uh, procurement in a way is it's like an interpreter you have to um mediate you have to speak with and interpret between the different functionalities in the company. You have to speak finance, you have to speak R&D, you have to speak marketing and so on, right? And, and, and so the new language for procurement to champion here is sustainability, environmental and health impact. So yes, I, I do think it, that kind of goes in the direction of a holistic understanding. Yeah, yeah great, great, uh, well, 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 well summarized. So Joselina and, and Alan, as uh, uh, let's say, uh, I think I'm right in saying that, that, that you've both been in procurement for most of your careers. Um, given what we've just said, what we've just heard there, I mean, ha you must have seen changes in your roles o over the years um, in terms of what you've been involved <laughs> in, in procurement, uh, let's say maybe in the early stages of your career compared to, compared to now, right? Absolutely, if I may go first. Um, I think in addition to what it was said, uh, we established the ground rules with the suppliers. I think it's an opportunity also for procurement to lead through innovation, right? So when we think about solving for the problem of packaging and we touch every aspect of the addressable spends, so not only on when we design a product, right? So when we sit at the early stages of the design, procurement has to be in those discussions. And I think he has. Has that changed from from, be, changed. from before to now? Absolutely, it's changed. I mean, uh, I want to say at the beginning we were probably more consulted. Now procurement sits at the table of the MPI discussions, yeah. right? So, and now the conversation is more pushing back, specifically when a product is designed, is it standardized to other packaging components that we have in the value chain? Is it something that? Um, what is going to be now the questions are actually being asked, how is it going to be disposed of? Is it actually going to be reused? So those conversations 10, 15 years ago never really happened. Now, there's still the misconception that it's going to cost more. There's still this notion that going into responsible packaging, it's going to be an investment that we're not going to recoup or is going to take longer to recoup. And I think this is where setting the ground rules <clears throat> with our suppliers also to try to share not only the investment, but also the cost and trying to find ways where we need to look at the PNL very differently. And that was a comment that I also wanted to echo from what Neil said, what is truly the bottom line? <laughs> and, and how do we define that? I think that that's important. Also procurement has the responsibility to connect not only on the direct side of the materials, but also when we're talking about, and that was Jane's point, media, marketing, yeah. really. So that part of the spend gets overlooked and it does, and I love that she brought that forward because there's a lot of waste and a lot of opportunity there where we could actually be more digital. And quite honestly, you don't have to necessarily, you know, impact so much uh, waste and pollution. So. I do think that it's changed definitely over the last 15 years. Is it changed to the point that we are operating at an optimum? Absolutely not, right? So it, it, it's more to be done. More to be done. And, and I would say procurement also has the 
the good opportunity not only to translate, but to lead, right? So to bring suppliers into that conversation, to actually enlist their owner R&D capabilities, to then try to find the solution jointly, right? Because ultimately it doesn't matter which side are you sitting in that conversation, we all live in the same planet. So if we don't find a solution today, then when? Yeah. Well said. No, absolutely. Fully, fully, uh, fully agree. And um, Alan, anything uh, you'd like to uh, to add? Uh... A couple of observations I'd add, Lawrence, to build on uh, some great content from uh, from my, from my colleagues here. The, uh, uh, the, the what I see, and this is in the food and grocery industry especially, is that where you have got highly active commercial functions, marketing, consumer facing functions that actually care about brand and care about the impact of packaging on brand, then procurement really has a chance to play some of the roles that Jocelyna and uh, Neil have, have talked about and to actually be involved in those questions. Certainly in a lot of the industry that I'm familiar with across food and grocery, packaging is regarded as just one of those necessary evils to get product from factory to shelves, get it sold, keep it turning over. And unless there is significant pressure from major customers, whether they're retailers, major food service businesses, then majority of supplying you know, organizations, you know, packaging is way down their priority list and it's not on the, uh, the agenda for procurement. Um, so it really does depend, in my experience, depending on what 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 part of the industry you're in and the exposure of your of your of your product and your packaging to uh, to customers and consumers in, uh, in in relatively high profile areas, um, you know, procurement have got a chance to do this kind of role, but in in many they don't. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's that's uh, well put, and I, th I think you know you can really see, and I haven't been in procurement that long in my career, but you can really see the evolution. That, that has gone through that all of you have highlighted that that there is more, so much more to procurement than 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 sourcing and negotiation and uh, sorry the negotiation and um, and price right there is so much more that needs to be done and there's so much more to think about so many more departments to, to, to collaborate with and and I think that also makes procurement a much more interesting role to be in uh, in this day and age and I think this is really something that um, you know, I would hope that uh, the evolution, if you haven't gone through it or you're about to go through it, that, you know, we at the SPP, that we can also, uh, if you engage with us, we can also uh, uh, help you um, uh, uh, along that journey because we've all <laughs> we've all experienced it. So uh, good. OK, well. Um, so that's a little bit more. But I want to go into a little bit more detail about uh, strategy right now. So back to you, audience. Tell us. A little bit about the organization and whether you have a CO2 emission reduction strategy. I'm hoping that's the majority, but you never know. But again, gives us a good indication of, uh, of, of where we are as a, as, as a, as a group and how well aware we are of the, uh, uh, of, of the strategy at hand of the organization's uh, reduction strategy. So good, fair, fair sample size there. Most of you obviously uh, good. Thankfully, uh, most of you are saying yes. Some of you saying no, which I think is, uh, I think is um, really interesting, right? Uh, it's, it's very, it's a hot topic at the moment and something that most companies are addressing. Perhaps you're about to embark on that. If you have any comments, by the way, on anything, you please uh, stick them into the chat and we'll try to come to, uh, to them at the end as well, uh, um, uh, by the way. So good. Um, and just a quick follow on from that. So if we talk about packaging and CO2 emissions, but do you do more? Is there more to it? Does it go beyond CO2 emissions? And I think this is, uh, this is what I want to build up to, because of course we do talk about the environmental impact of, uh, of packaging naturally, but there are other things to consider, right? The social aspect of it, the economic a aspect of it. And I think, you know, that's, uh, the, you can see that from, uh, here that that it's not just about emissions, right? So that's that's great. 
so um, panel, you can see the you can see the results there. So um, uh, I want to go straight into let's say a bit more on the strategy side of things um, to see to see uh, you know what sort of things should we consider, not just CO two emissions. I think right uh, when building a, a strategy for packaging sustainability. And uh, Neil, let's uh, let's start with you. Yeah, sure. I mean, that, that was uh, some really interesting data there. I mean, yeah. if we just go back to the to the slide around CO2 emissions, that, that's just one subset of, of one of the three spheres of sustainability, which is essentially in the environmental piece. So that's, that's almost a subset of a subset. Um, so we, we're doing well to measure that, but there is so much more to it. It's nice to see that the nucleus of people on here were actually measuring more. It would be really interesting to see exactly what they're measuring, um, you know, whether that's kind of full life cycle analysis. But even at that point, um, even if we're doing life cycle analysis on product and packaging together, let's say, then that just covers one of the three areas that we need to basically bring together to create a sustainable strategy. So that would cover the environmental aspects. So we, we look at ways, as we've spoke, spoken on this call, we look at ways to reduce materials, reduce our sources of waste, um, eliminate you know, unnecessary transportation, all these things that we can do within the environmental space. But there's also the connectivity of the environmental to the social and economic, as you described. So what we're looking for effectively is the sweet spot where we can control everything right in the middle of these kind of concentric circles. So when I, when I talk about social, um, clearly we could talk about maybe looking to purchase and procure more locally. Um, we can talk about the sociality of economy and we, we talk about human labor conditions. So things that are covered off in many an eco bar, this kind of platform kind of tool. But also there's the economic as well, and th this is not just about the, the actual the, the cost of goods, as I mentioned, it's about the, the total cost of ownership, understanding all the component parts of your supply chain, and how, what that does to bring together, um, not only the, the cost of your business, but also the total environmental footprint. And as part of that, it's about kind of looking at the way that you deal with your supply chains and the way that you deal with your suppliers, because you know, we're still um, in, in many organizations, we're still looking at suppliers as suppliers, perhaps not as supply partners um, and looking at how we actually embed our sustainable policies for our businesses into our extended supply chain. So we've got three separate areas here, but the combination of everything is, is the nucleus of where we want to drive our thinking. Yeah, no, it's good. Uh, absolutely. And I think uh, you know, hammering home the importance of suppliers, I think, is uh, it, it's absolutely crucial uh, in this. Um, uh, Joe, Selena, Alan, anything, uh, or, or Jane as well, happy to hear from, from any of you if you want to jump in. Um, I on think this one. DCO, DCO is definitely the, the center of the focus, right? Because there's so much on hidden, hidden costs, sorry, on total cost of ownership. And I think trying to unpack that with suppliers it's really a conversation that not often happens, but it has to, right? So the tier two, tier three supply chains, most companies have a challenge to really understand their own and they have to have conversations to really understand the tier two, tier three supply chain of your suppliers. Meaning how are they go about in their own design process, right? So their own supply chain process to pack goods that they actually ship it and deliver it to you. I think that has to be taken into account not only into your own product cycle analysis, but also understanding your suppliers, right? And that's a question that not often comes to the table. And then ultimately that should be factored into the strategy. I think that for, from a procurement, you know, setting the targets, that, that's probably very powerful. And also how do you link that into a framework with ground rules, right? So that has to be defined up front and then that also is going to fit into the, how are you going to measure it as an output, right? Yeah. So I, I, when we were looking at the beginning data that we lack data, right? So then a question that I'm going to throw back to all of us collectively in the audience, what data are we looking at? Because I mean, when we look at waste data, there's waste data available everywhere. Quite honestly, if you track the waste 
you know, movement across the world. Plenty of data available there. So I think I, I think I, I can help to answer that one already, right? It's, so the, the, you're absolutely right. The data is available, but is it in the right format? It's it's it, so trying to get that data into the into so you can actually do something with it. I think that's 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 just about as big a challenge as getting the data in in, in, in the first place. So. That's that's, that's a, going to be a key for everyone, I, I think. I just want to I want to move on there very quickly because I know I'm just conscious of the uh, of of time. I see you raising your your hand, Jane. You want to say something very quickly? Yeah. Yeah. I well, I don't know if I can say it quickly, but just to <laughs> echo what Jaslina just said, you know, what are we actually quantifying? Yeah. And are we quantifying what matters? And can the things that really matter be quantified? And I think that is, you know, for all of the six sigma and so on, you know, it's, it's all about benchmarking and quantifying. But I think that should be the entry point into discussing a, a, a strategy here. Does it make sense what we're quantifying? And I would argue that, you know, CO2 is something that we've been focused on because it's considerably easy to quantify. And yes, there we do have data. But for a lot of other aspects that are relevant for sustainable packaging, we don't have data. What about biodiversity loss? You know, yeah. what about all those aspects? So, just as a thought. no, definitely, yeah. Um, I do want to. I do with great points. I do want to move on in the interest of in the interest of uh, uh, of time. I want to ask you. So we talked about supplier engagement. I want to understand. You know, this is critical. Right. I do want to understand from the audience if you if you do have, let's say, a supplier engagement program. Uh, it could be about packaging, but just in. But I think, <laughs> from a procurement perspective, uh, I think it's really important um, that this. And if you do have this, which it looks like the majority uh, uh, of people do have, um, which is uh, which is great because I think this is uh, this is key, and it's also one way of gathering gathering data. Of course, you need to know what to ask. Right. Uh, you can ask environmental data. You can ask for auditable uh, audit data from from uh, from uh, manufacturing plants, etc. There are many ways uh, and many ways to do that. Um, and actually, that leads into the next question. And I want to ask uh, to bring you into the equation, uh, Alan, on, on this one. Um, so great. So that's good. That's encouraging that most have uh, uh, ha do have a supply engagement program. Um, so, so Alan, I want to I want to particularly get your thoughts on this one. How, you know, how, what is this successful? Like? How can we successfully engage with uh, with our suppliers? Is there a recipe for success here? Do you have some experience and something you can share with us? You are. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There we go. the The starting point, without a doubt, Lawrence, is for for me and whatever business I'm representing and talking to my suppliers. I've got a starting point in terms of a set of criteria, a set of requirements. Because with that starting point, I can then have an intelligent conversation. Right, guys, I want to know about what you're doing on reuse, recycling, or is it all virgin material that's going on? What is going on from environmental degradation from a, you know, where's your, are you scope two or scope three on net zero? Where are your, where are your science-based targets? What information can you provide to us about the environmental impacts of your operation in its supply chain? Now, the supplier that says, well, don't know, we haven't looked at any of that. That's one starting point. The more, more important starting point is, yes, actually, we're interested in these. Now that we know that you, Mr. Customer, are interested in these, we've really, we, we can put some attention, put some focus on these. So if we come as, as customers to our suppliers with a set of requirements, we, we can have an intelligent discussion and we can make progress together. We can also perhaps quickly identify that maybe we've got one or two suppliers who aren't in the right space for us. So that's my short take on how to successfully engage, have a set of criteria to start with. Yeah, exactly. I think that's really important. So, and a criteria, because this is not something, you know, if you want to get environmental data from your suppliers, that is going to be a subset of your supplier base, right? So if you want to get uh, information uh, about uh, bribery and corruption that's going to be a different perhaps a different subset of suppliers right so i think that's really important that it's it's not one it's not it's not a, a list of questions that you ask to every supplier you want to narrow the search down if you like with criteria to make sure that you can have that meaningful uh, meaningful uh, uh, discussion good um i am a little bit conscious of time 
um, because I do want to get to uh, to, to uh, the the kind of key themes from uh, from today's session, uh, and then I will uh, happy to open up the floor a little bit if we if we can. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so we've talked a lot. You know, <laughs> it's complex sustainability packaging in general. Is, uh, so we've talked about how to navigate that and and re requiring a, a, a mindset change. Um, we've talked about you know utilizing your organization and 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 positioning procurement as the as the pivot in terms of uh, internally within your organization if it comes to the collaboration with with, with internal stakeholders and externally um, uh, to, towards suppliers. And we've also talked about, you know, we have mentioned a lot about CO2 emissions, but it does go beyond that. And it, and I think this is something that perhaps needs, and we saw that from the answers and the questions as well, that everyone is, uh, does have that on the radar and it is going, going beyond that. But I think it's really important to hit home that it's not. And even if we're talking to people outside of this call in, a, in other organizations, that it does go beyond uh, CO2 emissions. And of course, we mentioned uh, about engaging with your suppliers for success. And I think that is something, if we were to have a future session of the SDP packaging chapter, I think that is something that we could we could spend much, much more time, uh, much more time on. Um, um, good. Um, if you have any questions, I see there is some chat. There is also the functionality of putting some questions in here, which we can come back to later. Oliver, I know that I haven't been monitoring the chats uh, yeah, that, no, it's been quite a few. Um, quite, I don't know if we've got time to, to bring them now. We can type them in here, but uh, if, if there are some that we can answer now quickly, is, do we have time for that? Yeah, no, we, we probably are a bit short on time because we need to start the next session, unfortunately, yeah. uh, and need to hop around the world, unfortunately, on different topics. But um, thank you for such a wonderful session. And as I said, what every session is producing a little digest of questions and answers and comments and thoughts. So if anyone's got any questions now, and we've got a couple in the chat, um, please put them in the chat now. And panel, would you mind looking at these over the next week or so? And providing some answers uh, for these guys and of course of course everyone is invited to join the SPP packaging chapter uh, yeah. which they're very welcome to do um, but um, as I said any final thoughts perhaps just one quick round from the panelists your one tip uh, for the audience listening in very short very short so Lawrence I'll let you go first cool. it's all about communication right it's about communication making sure that you're talking to the right people about the right things um, uh, all the time and understanding what problem you are trying to solve with packaging and sustainability. Excellent. Alan? Uh, echoing that uh, communication about the fact that packaging and waste are not binary opposites. All too often in the food industry, oh, we can't change the packaging because we'll increase waste. That's just <laughs> very poor design. Get on with it. Design properly. Packaging protects product, but it's, waste is not an excuse. Joselina? I will echo that and I will say it's a good opportunity to innovate. Excellent. Neil? It all goes back to one thing, engineering 101. If you can't measure it, you can't manage it. Good. Joe? Yeah, and I, and I would say maybe uh, sometimes you also have to talk about the things you cannot manage and measure. Um, because those also may be the ones that matter. Um, but my, I think the most important takeaway is if it's not healthy, it's not sustainable. So don't put hazardous chemicals into packaging because they transfer from packaging. They get into food, they get into the environment, and we really shouldn't be doing that. So. A huge thanks. Have I missed anyone? I don't think I've missed anyone. No, huge no. thanks uh, to all of you. Lawrence, awesome. Well done putting that session together. That really worked. So that was brilliant. Thank you Thank all you. so much for your efforts today. And um, hopefully we'll all see you again at other sessions. But do get in touch with the SPP packaging team because this is just the beginning uh, and loads of questions to be answered and loads of, well, trying to navigate the complexity of packaging and do I do this or not? And what the trade-offs are is going to be for eternity, including the data question. So thank you all. Thanks, Lawrence. Thanks, team. See you again soon. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks everyone for participating. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.